appreciate the time you've taken to be with us, Steve, today. Oh, hey, thanks very much, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Please help us understand your role at the State of Hawaii Department of Defense, and what can we expect from that department? So, as you said, I represent the State of Hawaii Department of Defense, of which the Hawaii National Guard falls under our department. The Hawaii National Guard has a dual mission or a dual role. We have a federal mission in which we work for the President of the United States when called upon, and we have military units that then can be deployed in support of the combatant commander's missions and plans. And you've seen that throughout the last decade or so with Afghanistan missions, Iraqi missions, and, and other type of missions like that. We also have a state mission, which makes us kind of unique with the reserve component force in that we also work for the governor of the state of Hawaii. And when called upon in a either natural or man-made disaster here locally, the governor has the ability to bring us up on state active duty, and we can respond to things like hurricanes, tsunamis, volcanic activity like we have in uh, 2018. And those skill sets that our soldiers and airmen have that have been honed training for their federal mission can be applied here. Similarly, a helicopter pilot who is used to flying, you know, external loads in a simulated combat environment or an actual combat environment, if we had a large wildland fire, we could then put a fire bucket on there and they could then prosecute the fire. And, and that is your background as a helicopter pilot. Yes, it is. I, was, I, was, I flew for almost 27 years. Similarly, we have people who are uh, in the medical field, engineering, transportation. All of those skill sets can come in to help alleviate the widespread suffering that a natural disaster could present to our state. What are you finding are some of the challenges? What we find with a lot of our National Guard soldiers, we are an airman, is we're 75% part-time, or uh, those soldiers and airmen have private jobs, they have families, they're, or, or they're going to school full-time, and they have to balance that with their military requirements. Their civilian job may become more complex. They may become a supervisor or a manager. It may take up more of their time. They may start a family and start having children, and that may take up more of their time. And, and, and then, of course, as they move up in their military career, they'll uh, be given more responsibilities. And so each of those three rings have to be given some degree of consideration. And that's our biggest challenge. We're very fortunate here. We have a strong relationship with all the employers. And, 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 and we try to put information out as soon as possible so that there can be some predictability in the service member's uh, training career. From your years of experience in the service, what can you offer as a counsel to that? What we offer with the military is, uh, of course, good vocational training from flying airplanes and helicopters to the medical field, to the legal field, to engineering, transportation that lends itself to a civilian career. More importantly, uh, we teach values. So as the, the younger folks come into the organization, they'll go off to their first school and they'll be taught values, ethics, and the uh, core competencies that's required for their uh, service. That's basically the foundation of leadership. Yes. And then as they move up in their career, they're going to be given leadership training. An example would be, you know, I, I went through the uh, Army National Guard side and I had a dual career in the Honolulu Police Department. By the time I was promoted in the Honolulu Police Department to sergeant, um, I was already a lieutenant colonel in the Army National Guard. So I had uh, attended a lot of leadership schools and I had some experience there. And it was a symbiotic relationship I had between my civilian and military career that, that, that really helped me out. So what's next? for the Guard? Well, what's next is we're constantly looking for uh, opportunities of the future. The military is changing a little bit. They've most recently created the Space Force. We have a Space Control Squadron on Kauai, and we're looking at possibly creating the Space National Guard. We are somewhat distant from the continental United States, and we're, in, we're an archipelagic state where our different counties are separated by bodies of water. So things like uh, surface craft or aircraft that can link those together in many different ways, one would be a domestic response operation, is, is what we're consistently looking at. We work with the legislature to try to improve the benefits to the Guard soldiers and airmen. There's educational benefits, there's retirement benefits, and we're always seeking a way to, to, to kind of improve that and give them some of the, um, the benefits that, that their active component um, uh, compatriots also have. And, and we're speaking about men and women. Yes, definitely. So we have opened up the combat arms branch of the Army National Guard to all genders. So what I would say to the young people today, male and female, is that we, we definitely have a home for you if you're interested. We have different websites that you can visit. They're interactive. They'll answer most of your questions. If you provide your contact information, a local recruiter 
much like yourself, maybe graduated from the same high school you did, will then contact you, answer the rest of your questions that you or your family might have. Parting words for the audience. The Guard is like a family. And it is a microcosm of the state of Hawaii, of the different communities that you come from. The people that you would be working with if you were to come down and visit some of our units looks just like your high school graduating class. <laughs> you know, it's a similar uh, makeup. And we're an active component of working with the emergency management agency, the governor's office, to ensure that we have a response capability in the case of the unthinkable that might happen, which would be, you know, a devastating hurricane or some other type of man-made or uh, natural event. And we've survived all those, thanks to you. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Brigadier General Steve Logan with the State of Hawaii Department of Defense.